It's time to unlock the real power of the Yolanzi clock. By flashing it with Autrix firmware, we'll turn it into a fully customizable smart display with a deep integration into Home Assistant. Plug in your Yolanzi to your computer, head on over to my tutorial and launch the Yolanzi Flasher website. Press the left and right buttons on your Yolanzi to boot it up. Once the Wi-Fi animation shows up, hit connect in the flasher and connect again on a COM port. Install Autrix 3, install Autrix 3, check the erase device checkbox and next, and then install. You will see the screen on the Yolanzi will freeze while it is installing and the device will reboot once it finishes. You see the Autrix animation and then it's going to let you know that the access point is ready. Now we need to pull out your mobile device, go to Wi-Fi, find the Autrix access point. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight is the password. Then head over to the browser, 192.168.4.1 and fill out your Wi-Fi credentials and hit connect to SSID. Once connected, your device will restart showing you the IP address on your home network. We do need MQTT for this to work, so we just need to make sure that is installed and configured. I'll post a link in the description to a video that can help you get that installed and configured. Next, we go to the Home Assistant Community Store. We search for Autrix. We download the repository. Then we head over to Settings, Devices and Services, Add Integration, Find Autrix, and Finish. Now, if you go over to settings, you'll see one repair is pending. If you hit submit, it'll just restart Home Assistant. While that's restarting, let's go to the IP address of your Autrix and configure the time and MQTT. I'm in the US, so I'm going to use the main pool host name and we need to put in our time zone. This link here will show you all the different time zones that you can paste in there. Mine is New York City time zone, so I will paste that one here. Hit save configuration and then head over to the MQTT tab. Put in the IP address of your MQTT broker or your Home Assistant instance, then fill in your username of your MQTT user you created, and then you will choose the name for your Autrix device. This will be your MQTT topic too. Make sure you check Home Assistant Discovery and type in your password for your MQTT user. Hit Save Configuration and Restart ESP. You see the Autrix animation again, the IP address and the MQT animation. If you head back over to Home Assistant, Integrations and over to MQTT, you will now be able to confirm if your device has connected to your Home Assistant. If it hasn't, go back and make sure that your IP address and your user is correct. Here is mine, you can see the name is correct. If yours didn't come over correctly, hit that pencil and update the name of your device. Here I am checking just a couple of the entities to make sure the names are correct. If you had to rename yours, just make sure to recreate the entity IDs. Head over to Developer Tools, Actions, choose the Autrix Custom Notification Action. Pick your device, check Message Text, and type in some text. Hit perform action to test the device. I'm going to check rainbow text and toggle that. Perform action again. There you have it. Everything's working as expected. Next, we're going to remove the stock apps from your device that we don't use. So go to Autrix configure Autrix parameters, choose your device and scroll way down to the bottom. We're going to leave the time app because that's the clock, but we're going to check the date app, humidity app, temperature app, and battery app. Do not set the toggles, so we will remove those from the device. Hit perform action. As you will see, the device did nothing and it's still showing those apps. So we have to reboot the device. Three ways you can do that. You can go to the Autrix IP and the MQTT tab, hit restart ESP, or you can hold the left and the right buttons to turn off the device and hold them again to turn it back on. The third option is to utilize the deep sleep action from your developer tools. So in your developer tools, go to Autrix Deep Sleep, choose your device again, check seconds to sleep, and just put one second. Hit perform action. Device will go to deep sleep and turn back on after a second. 
essentially performing a restart. Next up, let's add an app. A good portion of the apps require icons, so you'll find a link to the icons that I use. And here you will have a long list of weather icons and such. I will be testing the full screen GIF app, so I download Pac-Man 2. Pacman.gif is another 8x32 full screen GIF, so you can try that one. Next, I'm going to find the blueprint or the app, which I want to show you. That is a full screen GIF app, so I hit import blueprint. Open link to open that up in your home assistant. Hit preview and import blueprint. You'll see there's requirements which mention the icon. Find and click on the blueprint. Choose your device. Set the app name and make sure the icon name matches to what you're going to download onto the device. We're not going to use this icon tab. I'll show you that in a moment, but head over to the files tab and you will see that the icons folder is currently empty. So we need to load that icon in from our computer. We hit choose file. We find a downloaded file. You'll see Pac-Man 2 showed up after I chose it, but we want it in the icons folder, all capitals. So we had to type in icons with the forward slash hit upload. Once it uploads, you'll see the preview of that icon. We know the icons now on a device, so we can save this blueprint. You can name it if you want. I'm going to put Pac-Man at the end. So I know what GIF I'm displaying. Rename, go to automations, find this automation. We just created from the blueprint. There it is. And we're going to hit run actions. There you have it. The first app is now loaded on your device. Now I'm going to show you how to load the icons that are available on a Lemetric developer portal. So we choose an icon and we note the icon number 4033. We head over to the Autrix IP icons tab 4033 and hit preview. There you go. It automatically finds the icon. And if you hit download, you'll notice that the icons is now downloaded to the icons folder automatically. I'm going to head back over to home assistant. I'm going to change the icon name to 4033, save and perform actions. Now this isn't a full screen full width icon, so it's only showing in the left hand section. So this full screen GIF app, we want to show that Pac-Man icon. I'm going to put that back, hit save, run it again. And here we go. Back in my tutorial, you will see a good selection of blueprints or apps that you can choose from. I, of course, suggest them all. They've been compiled from other people's and mine work. If you head over to the dashboard section of my tutorial, it will show you how to create a dashboard for your Autrix device. You will need the custom button card, the mushroom card, and the browser card. On the left-hand side, you will see the top has the notification, the left has the controls, and the right hand is the app controls. The bottom can be a preview of your device. So we'll need to create a manual card on your dashboard and there's some updates they will need to do to the code in order to make it fit your installation. This is the code for the left hand side. So we're going to copy that. We have it in our clipboard. Head on over to your home assistant dashboard, create a new view. We want to use the sections view, give it a title, give it an icon. I like the clock icon for this. And we want to make sure that it is two sections wide. Hit save. Now we don't need the header in this left hand section. So we delete that. We add a new card. We want the manual card so we can paste the code. And there you have it. Before you hit save, remember to go through all the comments and update where you need to update for your specific device. Here you see a mini bit is mentioned. We will need to rename that to what your device is. In this case, tiny tricks is my second device. So I will replace mini bit with tiny tricks and in all of the instances in this card. Remember to review all of the code. Some of the helpers might have different names and there's also a navigation path, which you need to update to your instance. Once done, hit save. There you have it. First half done. Let's get the code for the right hand side. Again, in the new section on the right, we'll delete the header, create a new card, manual card, and paste the code. Here again, you will need to update 
all of the sections with their comments. You will need to update the names of your device or the automations and definitely the navigation path for the hold actions. There you are. Dashboard is looking good. But let's add the preview to the bottom of this dashboard. Copy the link from my tutorial. Go back to your Home Assistant dashboard, the bottom section. Again, delete the header. We don't need that. Add a new card. We're going to look for the web page card. Paste the link and put in the IP address of your device. I don't like the aspect ratio there, so I remove that. And we notice it's only one section wide, so we edit and make that two sections wide. Oh, but the bottom is still cut off, so we edit the card, go to layout, and make it seven rows long. Hit save. There you have it. Our dashboard is looking great. I hope you will enjoy all of these blueprints I compiled. Don't forget to check out my printables to print yourself a nice custom case for your device. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Happy modding.